But let us look at the demoniac right now. When we speak of a demoniac, we speak of a man that was possessed of the devil. Naniniwala tayo sa demon possession. Ano? Naniniwala tayo that there are unclean spirits around the world and they have the liberty to be able to enter into a man and possess him. The Bible calls that unclean spirits. The Bible calls it demons. And the word demons means disembodied spirits. Ang ibig sabihin niyan, they could be able to enter into a man's body and possess that body. Ang ating makikita rito ang kondisyon ng isang tao na possess ng mga demonyo. Alright? Now, of course, this is the month of November and uh, we just uh, uh, nang tawag doon, di naman celebrate, di ba? Atin na uh, ginunita ano, ang mga namatay natin mga kamag-anak sa November 1st. So itutuloy natin ang mga nakalagay sa Bible na nakakatakot na kwento. Oo. Uh, pang, ano to, pang November po ito. Hindi ito kinikwento sa December. Oo. Di ba? Alright. Nakikita nyo na maganda eh ang ginawa ng Panginoon. Pag November, nakakatakot. Pag December, eh masaya na. Eh Pasko na eh. Di ba? So, gusto ko lang ulitin at sabihin na hindi ho tayo naniniwala sa aswang at tigbalang sa manananggal. Sa atin po, ang manananggol, abogado. Abogadong lalaki ang manananggol. Abogadong babae ang manananggal. Alright? So, hindi tayo naiiniwala na kung ano-ano pang mga kapre, am I right? Naiimbento ng mga Pilipino, oo, upang i-describe ang kasamaan ng mundo. But there's a certain truth to what Filipinos believe in. Kapag pinag-uusapan natin ang aswang, ang tigbalang, ang kapre, ang manananggal, all of those things, anong ibig sabihin lang karotohanan niyan? That there is evil in this world. Tama? There is evil in this world. We cannot deny that. And if there is evil in this world, uh, there is Satan in the whole universe. And there are demons, millions of them, lurking around, trying to embody a person. Uh-oh. Now, I've experienced that. In fact, uh, in my first years in here in Santa Ana, I have had uh, uh, experience of demon-possessed people. Ito yun. But I do not want to explain it anymore. I do not, I, so, ito lang, ayaw ko na na makaranas pa na ako'y nag exorcise ng mga demon-possessed na tao because I have, I have done that many times before. Nakaka-drain yan spiritually. Nakaka-drain emotionally. Nakakapanghina po yan. And you're gonna find this out later on. That's why, kung meron pang demon possess na ating kakausapin dito, ah, o di- haras, demon haras, or uh, demon obsess, marami na akong mga axe preachers. Sila na lang ang mag exercise Kaya na yan, Rick Malit. Kaya na yan, ni Jody. 
Oh. Kaya na yan ni Berli Boreros. Oh, di ba? Ni Romy Lobnyal. Dami nyo. Ha? At i-assign ko na kayo. Alright. Okay. So, sa mundong ito, ay merong kasamaan. At nakikita nyo araw-araw yan. Oh. Saan ang mga lugar kung saan demon possess? Yung demon possession nangyayari. Saan? Sa lahat. Sa Congress. May mga demon possess dyan. Oo. Oh. Ah. Sa Malacanang, wala akong sinasabi, ha? Wala akong binabanggit. Oo. Eh, Malacanang is in my district. Saan man, lugar, walang pinipili ang demons para mag-embody ng tao. Okay? Sa kwentong ito, and this is a true story, this is not a fantastic story or a legend or a myth or something that the Lord invented to tell us. This is a true story. Kikita nyo, di ba? Oo. Sa verse 1 pa lamang, nakalagay na rito. And they came over unto the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes. So here we find that even uh, places uh, were mentioned. Di ba? Places were mentioned. Oo. On the other side of the sea. The word sea here is Sea of Galilee. On the other side. Places were mentioned. People were mentioned. Now, when you tell a story that, that is not true, you do not mention characters. And you do not mention places. But when you tell a story that is true, you mention where it happened. You know what I'm saying? And to whom it happened. All right, and what the storyteller is doing to what has happened. Now, if you realize that, you would know that this is a true story. So, at the end, let us look at the story of this man's life. But before that, sinabi ko na sa inyo that we believe in demon possession because the Bible says it. But I would like just to establish a principle here. And what is this principle? What people need today is not a mere profession of faith. Okay? Or just a decision for Christ. That's not what people need. And this is what many evangelical churches are doing right now. Just making a mere profession of faith. Now, in our ecclesia, how many people come forward to be saved? But do they come back? No. Thousands of people you can witness to. Am I right? You go out there and witness to people. I have witnessed to many of them. But they have never come back. They never continue on. Oh, they had a profession of faith. Uh, there, there, there is a, 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 um, a confession of receiving Christ. But it's just that. There's nothing into it. There's no evidence that the Lord Jesus Christ is in their hearts. Because if there's an evidence, there'll be some changes. Amen? Alam nyo ni. There'll be some changes. Oh. Let me just uh, use the example of Chairman Jimmy Anselmo here. Oh. When he was invited here in the Ecclesia to attend, he did not yet make a decision for the Lord. He has to come back several times. Am I right? To make a real decision to come to Christ. But Chairman Jimmy Anselmo, if I have the liberty to say it, uh, has all the vices in the world. 
Lahat ng vision nasa kanya. Chairman ng barangay yan. Alam niyo mga chairman ng mga barangay, di ba? Oo. But when he finally, when he finally came forward and finally received present to his own heart, changes begin to come. Am I right? Wala ka na makikitang nakadisplay na alak sa bahay niya. Oh. At ngayon, nagba-Bible study na siya doon sa kanyang barangay. And he is becoming a witness of the conversion that he received from the Lord. And to many of you, it's the same story. Di ba? I mean, look at Pastor Jojo Santos here. If you knew the kind of life he lived before he got converted to Christ, you would not believe right now that he is a man sitting down here preaching the Word of God. Ibig sabihin, when you really honestly receive the Lord Jesus into your life, changes will come. Now, I'm not saying that you'll be perfect. But what I'm saying, changes will come. And you have no business to force a man to change. Because it is God that will. Amen ba? It is God that will. And perhaps... Uh, Chairman Anselmo's wife, appreciate that now. Oh, di ba? Saan yung asawa niya? Saan yung miss niya? Andyan? Oh, all right. I mean, she now appreciates all those changes. And I think that your wife appreciates your changes. Oh. If she does not, it means she's not saying anything about you. I mean, that is what conversion means. And conversion is different from profession. Oh. Okay? Real conversion as sinners transform and converted from their evil ways. Now, we do not have to be like the example today in our text. But here, in our text, it shows us that if Christ can change even the worst man like this story here, how much more can he change a man like you and me? And you're not going to find any, any man worse than this man. Okay? So let us look at the story here and this man's life. Unang-una, ating pag-aralan yung condition niya. His condition. First of all, the Bible says he is naked. And when we speak of nakedness, we speak of exposed to the sinful elements of this world. In Luke chapter 8, verse 27, it says, And when he went forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man which had devils long time and wear no clothes, neither abode in any house but in the tombs. Here is a man who lived a life that is naked. Now, he does not even consider himself naked. And that is just the kind of life. Now, when we speak of spiritual nakedness, we speak of spiritual nakedness in which a man is naked to the sinful elements of the world. Andun siya sa gitna ng lahat ng vision ng buhay. Kahit may damit yan, kahit pa maganda ang damit yan. All right? I do not need, we, I, we do not need to go far. But you can go right to Ermita, 
you can go right to Makati Avenue, and there you're going to find people just in the evening, just walking around looking for enjoyment. They are naked, spiritually naked in this world. Until you get converted and God clothes you with the cloth of righteousness. No, 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 no. All right. So then, secondly, he was homeless. He says, neither abode in any house, but in the tombs. He was homeless. Like a stray sheep, he is lost. You know, a person, a person that is steeped in vices, ang isang tao na talagang uh, alipin ng bisyo. Hindi niya alam kung ano uuwi niya eh. Do you know that? Hindi niya alam kung ano tahanan niya eh. Ang taong alipin ng bisyo, kahit saan, humihiga yan eh. Makikita mo yung lasing na lasing, ha? higa yan kahit saan. Am I right? Sumusubo ka na yan. Pero tanong, alam ba niya yon? Hindi niya alam eh. Oo, hindi niya alam eh. Well, of course, hindi ko alam kung hindi niya alam kasi hindi ko naranasan yun eh. Di ba? Pero nakita ko yun eh. Nakikita ko sa mga taong lasing na lasing. Alam niyo, nung bata pa ako, may mga barkada kong unsaved. Mga anak na madalaking tao. So, you know, mga kaibigan ko sila, minsan pinupuntahan ko sila. Pero ako walang bisyo. Nagiinuman sila ng mga hard drinks dyan. Ako, iniinom ko soft drinks. At pag lasing na lasing na yan mga yan, hindi na alam kung saan uuwi. Sino ang umaakay sa kanila? Ako. Inaakay ko na yan. Ako na nagdadala sa kanila, sa bahay nila. Ibig sabihin, nakita nila sa akin nung bata pa ako, ito ibang tao ito eh. Am I right? Ibang tao ito eh. Nagpapasalamat sa akin yan, kinaumagahan. Alright. Yung sober na sila, yung hindi na lasing. Ah, sabihin nila, Benny, salamat ha, iniwi mo ko eh. Ganon ang kalagayan ng taong alipin ng lahat ng bisyo ng buhay. Alright? Well, of course, siguro, iba sa inyo, bago kayo naligtas, ganyan ang mga buhay nyo. Homeless. And then, thirdly, unclean. Sabi ng Bible, ang condition ng taon to, unclean. Marumi. Mark 5, verse number 2. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. He was unclean. Now, have you ever watched a person that is high on drugs? He does not even know he is high on drugs. I don't know. Maybe, is it true? Huh? Does it even know that? He does not even know na siya ay humihiga na sa kanyang ihi. Do you realize that? He doesn't even know that what he's doing is causing his own body to collapse and get sick. Drug addicts. High on drugs. And we think it's good. All right? That is the real problem today in this world. Oh, yan ang pinapakita sa atin ng Panginoon. I don't care if you're a woman or a man. If you are a slave of the vices of the world, you are living a totally unclean life. Oh. Aminin nyo man sa hindi. Pero, kung ikaw ay naligtas na at binago na ng Panginoon ng buhay mo, aminin mo yung sasabi ko sa'yo. Am I right? It's not only unclean, 
But number four, he is uncontrollable. You cannot control him. Uncontrollable. In verses 3 and 4, it says, Who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. I have seen a man who is demon-possessed, kahit baba ito, na demon-possessed, kahit limang lalaki ang hawak sa kanya, hindi kaya. She's too strong. I have seen that with my two eyes. You see? Uncontrollable. Do you realize that you do not need to be demon-possessed for you not to be controlled? You only need to be a slave of all kinds of vices and no one can control you. And that is exactly what the demons want. Every person, ito, sabihin ko sa inyo, every person that is a slave of the vices in this world is demon-possessed. You realize that? It's demon-possessed. Okay. And then number five, ito, he tries to afflict his body. Wounds himself each time he sins. Self-sacrifice is futile. Okay, let me give you an example. Alam niyo ba yung daan-daan na kapag Holy Week ha, ay lumalakad sa init ng araw na walang sapatos o walang chinelas? Tama? E napaka-init pag Abril. Ano ang ginagawa nila? Pinapalo nila ang kanilang mga sarili. Correct? At sila'y nagpapapako sa krus. And that is self-affliction. And that is what people do. At karamihan, karamihan ng gumagawa nito ay mga kriminal. Naunawaan niyo ba ako? Mga kriminal. Dapat nga ang gumawa nito. Sino ito? Saka congressman eh. Saka mayor. Saka gobernador. O. Oh. Saan mo na yung konsyal? Alright? See? He would try to afflict his own body. Oo. And number six, the Bible says, in Mark 5 and verse number 5, And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones. He was in agony. In agony. You know, there's no peace for the wicked. He thinks he's enjoying life. So you see a man who's smoking, he thinks he's enjoying it. You see a man who's drinking and get, getting drunk, he thinks he's enjoying it. Am I right? I mean, you know, uh, you go to Okada, you go to Soler, oh, di ba? you watch those people gambling and losing a lot of money, they're enjoying it. They think they're enjoying it. But in reality, they are in agony. Do you realize that? They are in agony. But you know what? They cannot do anything about it because they're slaves. Sila po'y alipin ng kanilang sariling mga bisyo ng buhay. Hindi sila makawala dun eh. Am I right? Yung kanilang mga bisyo, parang sila ay nakalagay dito, parang they're in chains. Oh. Hindi sila makawala sa mga bisyo yan until Jesus would come and change their lives. And then, number seven, he is controlled by another power. In Mark chapter 5, verse number 2, and when he was come out of the ship, 
immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. Controlled siya ng another power. And my dear friends, listen. The devil has all the power in the world to control you and you cannot do anything about it. You think you're strong? You think you're powerful? You think you can change yourself? No, you cannot change yourself. Do you realize that? I don't care if you think yourself to be educated and intelligent and powerful and having all the money you want to have, but I'm telling you right now, you cannot change yourself. You cannot get out to being controlled by the devil. The only way to do that is come to Jesus Christ. Because only Christ, when he died on the cross, can actually put you out of the devil's control. And you know what? Clean you up. Oh, see? Controlled by another power. So, then, yun ang condition niya. Then, we find his conversion. Yung kanyang pagbabago. His conversion. Now, the Bible says, he saw Jesus pass by. In verse 6, but when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. Jesus comes to seek and to save that which was lost. In Luke 19.10. Do you realize that? So, Jesus was passing by. He saw Jesus and he ran to worship him. Now, do you know that the devil believes in God and worships Him? Oh. Pagka misa, iniisip natin na, you know, na ang Diablo, hindi naniniwala sa Diyos. Naniniwala, alam nilang may Diyos eh. Alam nila yun eh. Alright? And this man, who is controlled by demons, when the Lord Jesus Christ passed by, they saw Jesus passing by, and that man ran and worshipped him. Then secondly, we find that Jesus cast out the demons. He would cast out those demons. Now, we might not have this kind of demons in our body today. We might not like the demonia. No, we're not. We're decent. We're dignified. Diba? We think ourselves to be clean in the body. We dress good and everything like this. But you know what? There are certain demons in our body that is present. And you know what's that? Pride, fear, doubt, unbelief, hatred, disobedience, covetousness, rebellion, all kinds of immorality, those are demons that can control our lives. And only the Lord Jesus Christ can save us from that and deliver us from those kind of demons and cleanse us of all our sins and forgive us and put us in a place in which he can use us. Notice, you notice how, how many, how many demons, ilan demonyo ang nasa loob ng katawan ng taong ito? In verse number nine, and he asked him, what is thy name? And he answered saying, my name is Legion. Why? For we are many. Can you imagine? Huh? Alam nyo yung virus 
Bakit nagiging severe at critical ang tao kapag siya'y na-infect ng virus? Ang iba mild, ang iba moderate. You know what I'm saying? Ha? Anong sabi ng mga doktor? Ang tawag doon, ha? viral load. Ibig sabihin, pag tinamaan ka na mas maraming virus ang pumasok sa iyo, you can be critical within days. Nakita ko yung uh, isang kakilala na namatay within six days of being infected. And what was the reason to it? The virus in his body were so many. Napaka rami ng virus. He just died. I have a friend who was a brother a pastor brother that died of the virus. Dahil kapatid niya ito, doktor to eh, kapatid niya ito, mahal na mahal niya yung kanyang kapatid. Niyakap niya na niyakap yung kapatid niya. Hinalikan ng hinalikan ng kapatid niya. Alright? Do you know what happened? In six days, she's dead. Why? Of all of the many viruses that enter your own body and you cannot do anything anymore. Same thing here. Nung tinanong ng Panginoon, ng pangalan mo, Legion, for we are many. Pero hindi kaya ng mga demonyo ang kapangyarihan ng Panginoon. Eh. Di ba? Kaya ang sinabi niya, eh ganito eh, oh, ah, uh, kung tatanggalin mo kami sa katawan ng demonyak na ito, ay just send us away doon sa mga baboy. Di ba nakalagay? Now there was there nigh, in verse 11, under the mountains a great herd of swine feeding and all the devils besought him saying, send us into the swine that we may enter into them. Anong ibig sabihin nito? Huwag na kayong kakain ng baboy. Kayo mga mahihilig kumain ng lechon, ah, kumain ng tawag nun, yung mga luto ng baboy na yun. Liempo, ah, lechon kawali, bagnet, ano pa? Crispy pata, patatim. Pagluto na yan, buhay pa rin ang mga demonyo doon. <laughs> Hindi na mamatay ang demonyo dahil niluto nyo yung baboy. Oh. Ngayon, pag kumain ka niyan, ah, magkukomplain ka. Hindi ka makalaka dahil sa gout. Kukomplain ka ng hindi ka makahinga. Di ba? Kukomplain ka ng ba't mataas yung blood pressure? Nagtatanong ka pa, bakit kaya mataas ang blood pressure ko? Ano ba kinain mo? Eh, kumain ako ng lechon. Kakaunti lang kinain ko. Eh. You know? Oh, di ba? Pagkatapos, mag request ka ng prayer. Sa prayer, chain lockdown natin. Sa totoo lang, ayaw ko nang panalangin pa yung mga taong yan. Eh. Ipapanalangin kita. Tapos kakain ka uli ng baboy. Oh, ba't umihimik kayo? Ha? Sinigang na baboy. 
Pastor, yung pong sinigang na baboy, wala na pong kolesterol yon dahil natunaw na ng, ng sampalok. Oh, ba't ko sinasabi to? Hindi na ako kumakain ng baboy at pag kumakain ka ng leksyon, nahiingkit ako sa'yo. <laughs> Kasi gusto ko rin kumain, hindi ko magawa. Gusto kitang batukan. Sa harapan ko, kumakain ka ng leksyon. Ah, hindi ba? Oh. Ngayon bukas na mga restaurant. Ano o orderin nyo? Sa restaurant. Hindi ko sinasabi na yung kinakain yung baboy, may demonyo. <laughs> Hindi ko sinasabi yun. Ang sinasabi ko lang, bakit pinili ng mga demonyo na pumunta sa baboy? Sapagkat ang baboy ang isa sa pinakamaruming hayop sa mundo. Do you realize that? Ayon niyong maniwala, bahala kayo. Oh, di ba? Alam niyo kung ilan? Ito, verse 13. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. Ilan? They were about 2,000. Just imagine 2,000 demons in the body of one man. And were choked into the sea. Folks, I'm not saying that you have those kind of demons that this man has. Pero sinabi ko na kanina, do you know that all of the sins we have are demonic? They all came from Satan. They all came from the devil. Pride, covetousness, all kinds of immorality, doubts, fears, rebellion, suspicion. All kinds of unrighteousness, homosexuality, and we think that's okay. You can count all of the sins written in Romans chapter 1, more than 39 of them. And they can be all in one man. But you know what? Praise God that even a demoniac like that can change. And the Lord changes his life. Why? Because he came to Christ. Lumapit siya sa Panginoon. He recognized Jesus as God's Son and therefore the only Lord and Savior. In Mark 5, 7, it says, And cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. Those demons inside him recognize Jesus as the Son of the Most High God. That demoniac recognize the Lord Jesus as God and the Son of God. And you know what happened? The Lord took away those demons. Napunta yung mga demons doon sa mga baboy. Ah, at yung mga baboy nagwala, nahulog doon sa steep, sa bangin, at nalunod doon sa dagat. What happened? When those demons were cast out by Christ. In Mark 5.15, And they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with a devil and had the legion, what? Sitting and clothed 
and in his right mind, and they were afraid. He was cleansed, and he was converted. He was seen by his own loved ones and people that know him, sitting, clothed, and in his right man. You know what that means? That only the Lord Jesus Christ can change lives. It is not the church. It is not religion. It is not the opinions of men. It is not money or power that can change the life of man. It is the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus Christ came, died on the cross of Calvary, shed his precious blood, was raised up the third day, because what he did on the cross is the power in which our lives can be changed. And what should we do? It's just like this demoniac. He came to Christ. He ran to the Lord. Asked those devils to get out of his own body. And the Lord cast them out. And you know what? It's just like if you come to Christ today. If you open your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ today. You know what he's going to do? He is going to forgive you of all your sins. And you will know it. Because the Bible says it. He is going to give you the faith to believe that Christ is the only Savior. That happened to this demonia. Please take note. And sabi rin sa last sentence. And they were afraid. Nung nakita ng mga tao, ng mga kamag-anak niya, na nagbago yung demonia, nakita na, nakaupo na, nakadamit na, in his own right mind, okay na, you know. Natakot yung mga kamag-anak. Alam mo ba totoo to? Merong na-save Diyos sa ating ekesiya. One day, na-save siya. Umuwi siya. May hawak ng Bible. Noon ang hawak niya, drugs eh. May hawak ng Bible. Hindi na nagmumura. Okay na siya magsalita. Ano umutawi sa kanyang bibig? Ha? Bible verses. Okay? At uh, hindi na siya umiinom. Wala na si Grillo. Wala na yung mga bisyo. Alam mo nangyari? Natakot ang tatay. Ang sabi ng tatay, anak, ano nangyari sa'yo? Ikaw ba'y normal pa? Why? Because people look at normal people who was vices. Pag wala ka ng bisyo, wala ka ng mga... Hindi ka na normal. Ano ka na? KJ ka na. Kill joy ka na. Halika, makisama ka sa amin. Ubinom ko kahit kaunti. Magsukal tayo. Things like this. Why? Because those are the normal things that people do that do not know Christ. But when a person that is so sinful, when a person who is a slave of all kinds of vices comes to know Jesus Christ and opens his life to him and receive him, he is not normal anymore. Do you know what the Bible says of him? Huh? People look at him as beside himself. Pag ginamit yung salitang beside himself, ibig sabihin nun, ulukuluko ito. Ha? Wala na sa hulog ito. Ha? Kasi iba yung normal eh, sa maraming tao ngayon. Oh. Ngayon, we are, go back, we are going back to normal. So bukas ang mga nightclub. Ano yun? Normal yun eh. Sa tao eh. Oo. Nakalagay sa dyaryo, nako, mag enjoy na po kayo. Bukas na mga kasino. Normal yun eh. Di ba? Normal yun eh. Nako, ang alak po, pwede na kayong bumili. Normal yun eh. Am I right? Pero sa mga taong nakakilala sa Panginoon, hindi yun normal eh. Kaya, hindi 
tayo normal. Na sa inyo, kung gusto niyo maging normal, ayon sa mundo, o ikaw ay baguhin ng Panginoon, ayon sa banal na kasulatan. And the Lord can change you now. I'm not saying that you'll be totally changed. No. That you'll be perfect. No, I'm not saying that the Lord will take away your sin nature and you will not even think of sin anymore. That's not true. Because I still think of sin every day. But you know what? You can be converted to Christ and your mind can be different. The Bible says, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. And that is a difference when you put your heart and life to the Lord Jesus Christ today and put your faith and trust upon Him alone. Shall we stand? Every head be bowed, every eye be closed. To those of you watching over the radio, listening over the radio, watching through live streaming. And you have come to a point in your life that you begin to realize that you need Christ. And you can come to Christ today. Open your heart to Him. Admit your sinfulness. Admit that you're lost. And you're bound for hell. And cry out to God for mercy. And tell him, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. Save me by your grace. We're going to give an opportunity for anyone here in the auditorium and to all our congregations and care stations right now to open your heart to Christ. You might not be like the demonia. No. You might just be a normal person doing your normal things. But you know for a fact that you do not even know where you're going when you die. Pag hindi mo alam ang pupuntahan mo pag namatay ka, ibig sabihin hindi ka ligtas. Ibig sabihin, kailangan mo ang Panginoon sa buhay mo. Ito na ang pagkakataon for you to open your heart to Jesus Christ and let Him come into your life and change you. Heavenly Father, please bless the message today. I ask and pray, Lord, that the people that have listened understood the message because of the Holy Spirit. Speak to everyone's heart today, Lord God. And I pray that even today, we're going to have people that will open their hearts to the Lord Jesus Christ and get converted to Him. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right. Lahat po na nakandito sa nakatayo, Ginawa rin nila ito. Ginagawa niyo ngayon. Okay? Sana naunawaan niyo ang mensahe. Naunawaan niyo ba? At kayo napunta rito, hindi kayo pinilit pumunta rito. Hindi nakita niyo ang pangangailangan niyo. Alright? Nakita mo makasalanan ka, nawawala ka, patungo sa kapahamakan, at si Kristo Jesus lang ang makapagligtas sa iyo sa kaluluwa mo at makapagbabago ng buhay mo. Am I right? Naunawaan niya, di ba? Okay. So magpipray tayo. Kayong mga nasa congregation care stations, ganoon din sa inyo. Kung may mga nakatayo dyan na nag-forward. Okay? Ako'y maglilid ng panalangin. Itong panalangin ito ay hindi ko panalangin, kundi iyong panalangin sa harapan ng Diyos. Pwede ba? Ito gusto mong sabihin sa Kanya. Alright? 
So, pwede mong sabihin to. Pwede mong, pwede kang mag, mag, manalangin ng on your own. Sa pagkalitong panalangin ito ay panalangin ng pagsisisi. Panalangin ng pagtanggap kay Kristo Yesus. Alright? So, ating iyukong ating mga ulo, ipigit ang ating mga mata, at sabihin nyo itong mga salatang ito ngayon. Sabihin nyo, Takilang Diyos, inaamin ko na ako'y makasalanan. Nawawala at napapahama. Ngayong umagang ito, tinatanggap kita, Panginoong Yesus, sa aking puso na aking tagapagligtas. Nagsisisi ng lahat ng mga maling paniniwala ko at kinukumpisal ko ang lahat ng aking kasalanan sa iyo. Ako po'y nagtitiwala at sumasampalataya sa inyo lamang. Ito ang dalangin ko sa inyong pangalan. Amen. Amen. Tumingin na kayo sa akin. Kayo po ba yung nag-pray? Puso nyo? Nag-pray kayo? Alright. Nalangan nyo yung tinanggap, tinanggap nyo ang Panginoon sa buhay nyo ngayon. Alright. Kung tinanggap nyo ang Panginoon sa buhay nyo ngayon, alam mo nakalagay sa Bible kung ano nangyari sa inyo? John 1.12 Basahin natin ang nakalagay sa John 1 verse number 12 Ayan Kalagay sa screen Pwede natin basahin Ano nakalagay? But as many as received Him to them gave He power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on His name Anong ibig sabihin sa wikang Tagalog? ang sino mang nagsitanggap sa Kanya, kay Kristo. Ha? Nag-pray ka, di ba? Tinanggap mo siya. Tinanggap mo siya ngayon. Ano nakalagay? Ngayon din, ikaw ay binigyan ng karapatang maging mga anak ng Diyos. So, hindi ang relihiyon o ang binyag na ginawa kang anak ng Diyos. Ngayon, November 7, sapagkat tinanggap mo ang Panginoon sa puso mo, ikaw ay naging anak ng Diyos. Amen ba? Yan ang sabi ng Bible. Oo. Hindi lang yan. A 2 Corinthians 5.17, nung tinanggap mo ang Panginoon sa buhay mo, ang sabi ng Bible, ikaw ay bagong nilalang. If any man be in Christ, nasayang yan, nakalagay sa screen. If any man be in Christ, he is what? A new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Ang sino mang na kay Kristo ay bagong nila lang. Na kay Kristo ka na eh. Tinanggap mo na siya eh. Alright? Okay. Meron kami dito mga counselors. At gusto kong kausapin pa kayo sa anong nangyari sa inyo noon tinanggap mo ang Panginoon sa buhay mo. Alright? So please, take them, go with them, kneel down there, and explain to them the assurance of salvation while you people sit down and pray for these people who came forward. The rest of our congregation can stay as well.